Hi everyone. Um, I'm making this video because, um, well, it's related to my uh, 200 meter long wire antenna that some of you will be aware of from my recent uh, uploads. Um, I'm taking the design of a sort of basic beverage from um, the medium wave circle. Um, they've got a design that's suitable for frequencies below five megahertz. So. Uh, well, effectively, from their point of view, it's for long wave and medium wave DXing, um, and it involves the use of a Balin transformer at the receiver end um, and a uh, termination resistor at the front end. And so, ultimately, what you end up with is something that's, you know, an antenna that's a bit more directional. Um, this particular design is suitable for 100 meters uh, in length and above, um, but although they specify sort of two. 100 to 500 meters um, as being sort of optimum. Um, the other issue is that we, when I have used the ELAD FDM Duo with my 200 meter antenna, um, signal strength has been a bit low at times. And it was Mateus actually who pointed out that because of its 50 ohm impedance uh, input, that it might benefit from some matching. Uh, so, so what I've done is I've um, bought two sort of project boxes and to create a sort of sort of weatherproof housing for what's required at either end of this antenna. Um, the, so the termination resistance, which is sort of five to 600 ohms, it's not exactly um, specified, um, is in this box that I've created. And, um, and so basically the antenna, the end of the antenna input uh, plugs in one end and then the other end is for an earth so uh, somehow I've got to figure out how to create a decent earth where, uh, out in the DX woods where I do this. Um, so I'm probably going to have to get hold of some copper pipe and bash them into the ground uh, in a sort of location uh, where they won't easily be seen because um, it would be uh, it wouldn't be realistic to be bashing in copper pipes to create an earth and then digging them up again. Um, so that's the termination uh, resistor box and the Balin is here. So for 75 ohm uh, input, uh, they specify the secondary um, coil. Uh, this is the receiver side to have four turns and to terminate at the center pin on the BNC um, and, and then to the shielding. Uh, and they recommend 75 ohm coax. Uh, and then the primary coil uh, is 11 turns, uh, which uh, terminates at one end for the uh, antenna and then the other, obviously, for the earth. So this apparently is designed, for, as I said, for 75 ohms. For 50 ohms uh, impedance, you simply increase the number of turns on the primary coil to up from 11 to 14, and then you have a design that's optimized for um, 50 ohms. Uh, now, I've been speaking to people who keep telling me, well, for receivers, Balins aren't really required, the receiver gain can compensate, etc. And that might well be true, particularly at frequencies above five megahertz. Um, but, you know, it's an experiment and um, it's what I like to do. So, uh, you know, I thought that to take my 200 meter long wire and essentially create you know an option for a beverage which should mean it's more directional irrespective of the issue of, of how how um, well or what bigger difference having this Balin will make um, you know uh, it's kind of irrespective really you know just it's good to uh, it's good to experiment and there is a lot of voodoo engineering regarding antennas you know everyone's got a point of view on it they quite often they're not consistent. Um, so, you know, I think that uh, this is worth a shot. I'm so, so this, as I said, this is for 75 ohms. I'm going to build another one for 50 ohm and just test it. I mean, the whole lot costs less than a tenner um, and it's fun to do it. Despite my kind of rather modest practical skills, um, these two are probably the most professional looking devices I've built regarding uh, my listening hobby to date. So, uh, you know, I'm reasonably uh, happy with what I've done there. It took sort of two or three hours. Um, but, you know, um, let's see uh, how the antenna operates. And also let's see what the um, signal 
kind of strength is like um, with the ELAD um, when I built the uh, the 50 ohm version. So uh, I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, thank goodness the YL is away um, because this is the coffee table and if she saw this, she'd be going nuts. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been fun to uh, make these two uh, bits of kit. And um, I next need to find some copper pipe um, which hopefully won't be too difficult and then um, just create a couple of fly leads for this box with these kind of push type connectors I've got quite a few of these um, and uh, and then I'll be set and so um, I shall go to the woods and uh, test it all out and you know hopefully um, you know I'll get some positive results uh, there was an issue actually, and I took the ELED out at the weekend with the laptop for the first time. Um, and I was using a, a new Elec 9 to 1 Balin. It's this little mini Balin that you use with an RTL SDR um, and for a long while. And um, as soon as I switched the laptop on, there was a huge amount of noise coupling back to the receiver. Um, but that's, I think that could be because um, my car body is made out of plastic and there's no shielding. And so, although I was using a sort of 10 meter coax, um, there was still a very strong sort of signal being picked up one well, signal noise being picked up by the receiver from the uh, laptop which kind of made the whole thing a bit pointless fortunately I still managed to get eight or nine good catches with the uh, Sony but um, I'm not giving up um, and I will uh, uh, have another go um, but in, the, in our other car which it is made of metal thankfully so anyway, thanks for watching. Um, there's another video coming because I've rebuilt my power pack for the ELAB. That fell apart. Uh, that's coming next. Thanks very much.